Hey guys, it's Nova, and I am doing my first video on my new computer setup. Honestly, when it came to the actual art, it is absolutely amazing how much quicker that I can manage to get art done when my entire computer file is not, not my entire computer file, but my entire computer and system is not fighting me every step of the way. This is delightful and I love it. And also the only game so far I've played on it is Stardew Valley, but it runs so smooth now and I am so excited to do a Dragon Age playthrough. But I want to do a little bit of a video today about, well, we've got a new character for Trace. His name is Reed, and I really wanted to draw him because, you know, this is the last video I'm going to be posting during Pride Month. And, well, that being important is because Reed is gender non-conforming. Which I really like. I don't know why his character just kind of struck me as gender non-conforming. I'm going to do a bit of a, um, a timestamp if you want to skip to the little bit of a story time that I have. It's not a very long story time, but first I'm going to talk about the character. Again, there will be a timestamp where to go to if you just want to hear the story. If you just want to hear about the character, then when I go into the story, then I guess you can just click off then. But... If you want to hear both, just continue to listen. But I want to talk about the character first. Now, I don't have that much yet for Reed. Uh, he is just a very sweet character. He's very calm. Very calm-natured, very quiet. And I absolutely love him so far. One thing to note is he will be essentially the group's healer. And the reason he ends up as the group healer is because he is in college as a nursing student. And I really like, I, I really like him with this because I think he's one of those that honestly he will eventually have like tattoos and stuff I think as he gets older. So he's going to be that nurse that looks like all tatted up and all just like alternative but is also probably the sweetest nurse on the entire floor or in the entire department that you're in. In regard to his friends, it's entirely like that attitude of a video game healer, because I know in anime you get the healer as, you know, the soft, gentle one who will heal people and be really sweet, but he is more of the attitude, if you do something absolutely stupid that I've already warned you not to, well, that's on you because I warned you and you did a stupid. So now you get to deal with the consequences of the stupid. Because he is also, he's sweet, but he's also practical. And if you did something dumb, well, now you're just going to have to live with the consequences. You know, he's not going to let you die, but you're going to be at least a little sore for a bit. And he's not going to be that gentle with fixing you up if, if you did something stupid and did this to yourself. That is slightly inspired by um, my mother, who, whenever she would play World of Warcraft, with, uh, especially with, like, dad and his buddies and their buddies in their guild, mom was the healer. The number of times that I heard that, that, well, you did this to yourself kind of attitude with it, it was just delightful and I love it and... I love those kinds of healers because it's like, you know, people picture the healer as this one type of person, but in reality, most of the time, at least with video game parties, the healer's dealing with just these chaos children running around and is just tired, and I love it. But I do love Reed as a character already. Again, he's very sweet. He's very nice. Just don't be stupid. But he is a gender non-conforming character, and I really like him. He very firmly identifies with he, him pronouns. He just, he's gonna look how he wants to look, and he prefers to look a bit more feminine, and he doesn't really care what you think of that. And I like characters like that. It's like, he is very, he's very secure in himself, and I love that. And I love that for him. I love characters like that. So the idea of creating one like that was just wonderful. Visually, I liked the idea of him having long hair. Obviously, I gave him... It's it's an off-center ponytail. It's not centered. Definitely not. But it's also not a side ponytail. It falls somewhere in between. He does pull his hair back. Especially if he's busy with anything. Because he doesn't want it to get in the way. And... 
while he likes his hair, he takes a lot of pride in his hair. If it's in the way, it's getting pulled back and it doesn't matter how messy the bun is, aesthetics are not going to heal you faster, is essentially his attitude with it. And that's another thing that I like. He likes to look pretty, but if pretty's getting in the way, then pretty is the thing going out the window, and he doesn't really care. Now, I did have to be careful a little bit when picking his hair color, admittedly, because I realized as I was drawing him, but I really liked his design. Okay, quick side note, I have been obsessed recently with the very not straight skateboarding anime. If you've seen Skate the Infinity, you know exactly what I mean when I say that. And I love, I love Cherry. He is one of my favorites. He is a goober. And he is one of these I am so serious but also I'm going to mess with everyone kind of characters and I adore him. And he just has such an attitude and I love it. And him and Joe are just hilarious. And I just, I realized that a bit of influence in regard to his, in regard to Reed's appearance was kind of slowly sneaking its way in. A, a bit of, of Cherry's influence on Reed was sneaking into the design, so I had to be very careful when I did his hair color. I like the hair color that I landed on. It's kind of a reddish brown, almost an auburnish kind of color that almost has a, a pinky purplish tone to it. But that was not intentional to the fact that, that visually there's a bit of inspiration from Cherry there. That is not intentional. It just happened and I liked his design too much to change it. And I feel like there's enough difference anyway. He is very tall. He's one of the taller ones of the whole group. And I kind of like that. The healer being like one of the tallest. He is not the tallest. Willow holds that, has that title of being the tallest of the group. But I really do like the idea of Reed being taller. And if you notice, he's got a few little freckles, which I really like putting little freckles and little beauty marks and stuff on my characters. I think that adds just a bit more realism, a bit more character to the characters. But another thing that I put on him was a couple of birthmarks. And those were actually inspired. I know people don't think of birthmarks as being big and splotchy. They think of little things. But I went to school with a girl who, like, one almost entirely one of her arms was covered in a splotchy birthmark. And it was very prominent and just very clear. And it was, it wasn't subtle either. It was, like, very bright red. And... It was very interesting, and I kind of, that idea popped in my head, I guess because I saw a picture of her recently on, on Facebook. So I ended up bringing that into the actual character design in regard to there being more of a larger splotchy birthmark. I think it covers like his neck, part of his shoulder, and onto some of his chest and onto his other arm. And I like that. I think it turned out really good. Trying to get a good color balance for his outfit was a little bit different. I did not intentionally go with, with you know, the reds and the blues, the, the reddish purples and the, the blues that are not quite the same, but a little bit similar to the GNC flag. That was not intentional, but it ended up being on there. And the hearts in the background, obviously, I colored with the flag colors because I liked that. I fiddled with that a little bit to get it balanced just right. But that's all I have for the character so far, so that's about it for talking about him. So now we're going to go into a little bit of a story time in regard to myself and my very not straightness. I am still getting the hang of how YouTube's algorithm handles those words because, you know, even though they shouldn't censor things like that, they do and it's frustrating. But I... I am one of those people I do often refer to myself with the word of queer because it is the best descriptor overall because I'm not straight, but I'm also not, you know, completely gay, but also gender wise, I am, I'm non-binary. I fall a little bit more so gender fluid, leaning more transmasculine, but 
I am non-binary. I prefer they, them pronouns. And it took me a long time to really realize that and to come to grips with that. Largely because I'm a 90s kid and I grew up in a middle of nowhere, very conservative area. We didn't really have words for that at that time other than just especially not anything relating to trans. I didn't know that was a thing until high school. I just knew I always didn't feel right. And when I was growing up, you know, beyond gay, we didn't really have a, a word for it. Now, I was exposed to that kind of thing a little bit earlier than most people would have been because my, my brother, who is not blood-related to me, his bio mom was even back then whenever I was a kid in a relationship with another woman and for anybody who wondered well how did your parents explain that to you it really wasn't that deep I was a kid you know they love each other okay great the, um, I didn't think anything of it beyond that legitimately that was the most I really thought about it and I didn't really come to grips with things about myself until I was older because I didn't think about it much back then, especially because when you grow up in the kind of area that I do, you have crushes on guys sometimes, but you don't think much about it. And sometimes I genuinely wonder if I actually had crushes or if I just picked a boy I thought was cute and just, okay, I have a crush on him. Because I have been dealing more and more with feeling like I'm demisexual more so than really being, oops, than really being bi, which is what I identified as for a very long time. Because gender doesn't really matter to me, but I don't, if it's a real person, like, you know, fictional characters aside, um, if it's a real person, I don't, I genuinely don't that often look at someone and go, oh, they're hot, or, you know, I can recognize if someone's genuinely attractive, but there's a difference between that and being like, oh god, I'd like them to, you know, do stuff to me. That's not really how I've ever functioned on that and a great example is in regard to coming to terms with that I really actually like girls for one thing I think I had a couple of actual crushes on the very few friends that I had when I was in school because I would get close to them and I would form a bond with them and I just you know, my heart would be happy if I was around them. But it really, really became prominent when my partner and I got in contact. I'm going to refer to her as Raven. She is my absolute best friend. We've been together for a very long time now. We consider it officially when we moved in together, but... It was that way for a much long, t a much longer time before that. Technically, since about a week before I turned 16. And genuinely, it was one of those things we were around each other constantly after we got back in touch with each other after middle school. Largely because I was on spring break the last year of middle school. I was lonely, as I would often get, and I found her number. And it was so funny because whenever she answered, I was just like, hi! And she apparently, she's told me this, she looked at the phone like some crazy person had gotten her number because it didn't, you know, I didn't say my name. And then I ended up introducing myself, you know, reminding her who I was. And she's like, hey! And she was on the phone at the time with her friend, I think from school at the time, so she ended up calling me back. And initially, she wasn't really gonna call me back. But something compelled her to. And we just started talking. And we just kind of clicked. So we started, you know, I went over there. 
the first time and it was so funny because I actually got sick that evening but I didn't want to go home so bad because uh, genuinely that was one of the few times that I actually stayed over at somebody's house the whole night and get didn't get immediately homesick and go home because that's usually what would happen and it was just the matter of we became best friends and were around each other so consistently after that because even though she was homeschooled I'd get home I would grab the phone once once Papa was done doing claims for the day I'd grab the phone, I'd call her, we would be on the phone for hours. We really would. We would be on the phone for a couple of hours at a time and just talking, just essentially hanging out, but over the phone. And that would just be the constant of how we would do. And as time went on, you know, staying the night at each other's houses, being practically attached at the hip, it just got... I started getting that feeling in my chest and I liked being around her and it was so funny. There was one year distinctly because I would go over there and I'd go to her church with her for VBS for Vacation Bible School and one year my sister went too so she was over there at Raven's house with us and it was so funny because I actually very distinctly remember Raven was paying attention to my sister more than me for just, it was just a moment. But I felt so insanely jealous. And that was whenever my brain kind of went, oh, oh no, what do I do? <laughs> and it was just so jarring. And it just, it went on like that with me hiding that feeling for so long. And of course, you know, like I said, about a week before I turned 16, we ended up kind of confessing to each other. And it was, I can still remember it vaguely, it doesn't stick out as prominently in my mind as it used to, but I remember it was real late at night, we were over at her house, in bed, you know, because it's not unusual for girls in high school if they're staying the night at each other's house. Nobody's sleeping on the floor, usually somebody's, usually but both people are in the bed. Because why? You know, why bother with somebody sleeping on the floor? And after that, it was just like a, a thing. We didn't say anything to anybody, of course. We kept it very under wraps, especially because her family was extremely religious. And I didn't actually tell anyone until 12th grade. Uh, yeah, it was 12th grade. I was with my mom to go and get my ears done with the second piercing, I think, that I have in my ears. I think either that or it was uh, cartilage. I can't remember which one. But we were out at the mall at the piercing kiosk. PSA, don't get your ears done at, like, the piercing kiosk. If they use, like, the gun, the little piercing gun thing, don't use those. Like, guys, those cause a lot of trauma to your actual ears, which I get, you know, putting a, a needle through it to do a piercing. That's not exactly not traumatic to the area, but it's going to be a lot safer, a lot sanitary, a lot more sanitary, and you are going to get a much more healthy result if you go to, like, a piercing studio where somebody is properly trained and uses a needle to pierce it rather than, um rather than one of those little guns with the earring where they force the post of the earring through your ear. Genuinely, it's just going to do better. Just a quick PSA on that because I've had so many, just my ears would get infected almost every time whenever I'd go and get it done with like a gun. So just PSA on that. But it was so funny when I did come out to my mother because she was just, especially when I told her, you know, that me and Raven were a thing, mom just goes, I know. The level of taking the wind out of my sails, but also relief that I felt, it was so jarring that I was almost just, I was just confused for a minute. Because I was like, what, what do you mean you know? Honey, you never talk about boys or anything like that. 
and you always talk about Raven, and you two are attached at the hip. I put it together pretty fast. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> okay. Now, I might do a more in-depth thing, but later about things that happened later on, because there was some interesting and not so great things that happened whenever um, her folks found out that was not pleasant. That went very poorly, but that's not, I don't think that's, I don't feel as much like that's my story to tell, at least not without her okay, because it's not. My whole family knew pretty quickly and pretty immediately, well before I actually came out, that that was the case, but hers did not, and it was not great when it was found out. But again, I don't feel like that's really my story to tell until I talk to Raven about it first. Because it's it's her story, even more than mine, really. But when it comes to, I do want to transition talking about a little bit, heh, <laughs> transition, to talking a little bit about the fact that I am non-binary and figuring that out. I was in college before I actually put that together. Because I didn't really get on Tumblr until end of high school, early college. And, well, that was really when I started figuring that out. Because, you know, people were more open about that sort of thing. And I realized I never felt right as myself. It was weird. I was constantly... It was a thing where, on one hand... I was very defensive if people mistook me for a boy. It would just... I was defensive largely because looking back on it because it didn't feel incorrect. But it would make me so, so defensive and so just anxious that there were times because I would wear oversized hoodies. I would sometimes cut my hair really short just because it makes me feel more comfortable. And I preferred my hair short. My mom made me grow it out. I was not happy during that point in time. Um, because I wanted it short. But there was at least one point in time where my hair was short. I was wearing an oversized Legend of Zelda hoodie. And I was on the bus. And I had somebody actually ask me. Am I a boy or am I a girl? And of course at the time I was like, well, I'm a girl. Can't you tell I'm a girl? Especially since I had a sparkly hair clip in my hair. But... It just, the fact that it didn't strike me as negative whenever people would mistake me for a boy, that would induce panic in a way that I cannot describe internally. That it just, shouldn't it, shouldn't it be bad if somebody's mistaking me for a boy? Shouldn't I feel bad? Why does it feel more bad that, that they, you know ask if I'm a girl and identifying that way doesn't feel good. Calling myself that doesn't feel good. Why is it backwards? And that was something I dealt with for a long time that I just kind of put in a box and just threw in a closet internally that I didn't ever want to open again because it was scary. Because we didn't have openly those words back then, at least not that I was exposed to. So it was scary, and it took until I was in college, really, for me to, uh, to really come to the conclusion and realize, oh hey, I might not identify with what I was born as. And god, that was scary. Especially living in a more conservative place. Especially being in somewhere that's like middle of nowhere compared to other places. It was scary. Especially when it was, when I expressed it to somebody else in my family and their response was, No, you're not. You're a girl. And all I can think is, but I don't feel like one. And there are times also where I don't feel like the other. I feel like I'm neither. Which is something I had to come to terms with too, that it was also frustrating. And it took ages for me to really accept that I am non-binary. And what really solidified it 
honestly was my partner being supportive and my sister and my brother-in-law being supportive and you know with me wanting to try using they them or even he him or a mixture of pronouns and it was just suddenly things felt okay when when those were used when those were used it felt much more comfortable and that was when I felt okay and when I didn't feel like I was hiding something or like I was trying to be something I'm not and I know this is just a very vague thing but it is one that I wanted to talk about especially with this being the last video I'm posting during Pride Month and I did want to talk about my experience, especially because everybody acts nowadays because there's more exposure to these things that you should know immediately. Well, are you or aren't you? What are you? What do you feel like you are? You don't know? What do you mean you don't know? People act like it's not okay to experiment, which is a weird roundabout way of being like it used to be. But because these things are more known, people act like, well, you shouldn't have to experiment. You should just know. Which is ridiculous to me, because if you don't experiment and play around with things, how can you really find who you are? Just like if you don't experiment and play around with things, how, how can you actually find what you're good at? If you don't let yourself try these things, you won't know if that is who you are. Because if I didn't let myself experiment with not identifying as what I was born as, then I wouldn't know that, oh, that doesn't feel right. I would just, well, I'd still know it doesn't feel right, but I wouldn't know this feels more correct. Rather than, you know, just always feeling like I was an imposter in my own body. And it's, it's weird. It's like a weird roundabout thing that we've gotten back to. Of rather than just, oh no, you're not. It's, oh, you should know. Which is ridiculous to me. Because people are going to experiment, that's part of being a human being. And being an individual is experimenting with who you are. And people who didn't have that opportunity when they were younger, of course aren't going to know and are going to experiment once they're older. That is just how things are, that's how things go. And I wanted people, other people to know that if you don't know who you are right now, that's okay. That's not a huge deal, it's not a huge problem. But you should give yourself time to experiment and room to grow into who you are and to find who you are. Because honestly, giving yourself time to meet yourself is important and I think that everybody should take that time to meet themselves and get to know themselves. But that's all I wanted to say really with my own story of coming out and my own story of realizing that I'm not straight and realizing that I am not, you know, cis. Realizing that I'm non-binary. And if you're unsure about it, just give yourself time and give yourself room. Because I bet the person that you'll meet is a really great one that you'll like being. So I know that got sappy there at the end especially, but I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I really want to thank my patrons, Inside Chaos, Salmon, and Creativa Artly. You guys are awesome, and so is everyone watching this video. Whether you know who you are firmly, or you're still learning who you are. Just thank you for being here, and be kind to yourselves, okay? And... Well, see you guys next time. Bye!